Hello, my fellow parasites. Parasites, apologize! No. Anyway, welcome to Season 4 of the Venom Vlog. This season we'll be covering Venom 2 movie news, more classic Venom and Carnage stories, the Spider-Man Maximum Venom animated series, and all comics involving Eugene Flash Thompson. So sit back and enjoy another exciting episode of The Venom Vlog. I'm Tom Hardy and you're watching The Venom Vlog. Oh man. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Venom Vlog, and today I have a very special guest, uh, actually the first guest really uh, to ever do this over audio with me, which is Ben Pronsky, who's the voice of Venom on the current Maximum Venom cartoon. Ben, thank you so much for being here today. Hey man, thanks for having me, I appreciate it. Absolutely, and uh, real quick background is I actually got to meet Ben uh, real briefly at D23 and been following your Instagram ever since. I love the posts you have on there, and uh, and you you actually got me to buy some Venom toys, and we're going to talk about that here coming up soon. But um, but yeah, it means a lot to me. And uh, what other I guess what, like real quickly to give you a, a plug too, where can people find you right now that are that you know if after, after they fall in love with this interview, where can they find you? <laughs> Uh, I'm up on social on Instagram and Twitter at Ben Pronsky, which is B-E-N-P-R-O-N-S-K-Y. There you go. Guys, please check him out. He's a really awesome dude. He's done a lot of great work, not just Venom, a lot of other great work too. So uh, make sure you follow him. And this, oh, stop, stop. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm very complimentary. You'll, you'll see. Um, but, uh, you know, but it's also really cool for me because I get to talk to the voice of Eddie Brock and Venom, who are, of course, two of my favorite characters. We're, you know, we're f past 500 episodes of the show. And I, I love talking to people who bring this character to life, whether it's a comic book writer or voice actor or Tom Hardy, like whoever it is, it, it's, a, it's a real pleasure. And in this episode, we're just going to have a, a talk about thi all things Venom. Like I just, I'd love to just know what you think of the guy, like, you know, what you like to bring to the table when you play him, you know, favorite moments of the character in the past. Uh, so this is just going to be a real casual, quick, you know, eight minute or so chat. Um, if you're down for that. Yeah, cool. Yeah. All right. Talk. Well, let's uh, let's start with the comic books because obviously Venom has a great origin in the comics, uh, co-created by David Michelini and Todd McFarlane, um, and he's had a, a very interesting history where he started off as a villain and then kind of you know became so popular that the, you know Marvel couldn't kill him off, so they had to make Carnage and make Ven you know Venom more of a hero and antihero. So I'm just kind of curious how you first heard of Venom? Were you a fan before? Is there, is there anything, you know, that, uh, that kind of brought you into the character? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny because, uh, you know, I, I grew up, I'm, I'm very much like a kid of the nineties. Um, so when I was coming up, I mean like that, you know, the amazing Spider-Man 300, uh, came out when I was like 10 years old. Um, you know, and so, uh, I was, uh, I definitely was a collector of like, you know, X-Men, um, and Spidey and stuff like that. And when Venom came along, it was definitely something for me where I was like, who is this guy? Like, this is, it was just so insane to me at that time. Um, you know, and through the, through the nineties, you know, with, uh, uh, with sort of the expansion of, you know, with lethal protector and all that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I think I was like, I must've been like 15 when lethal protector came out, something like that. And I remember getting my driver's license the next year and like, I mean, I was that kid that, like, the first thing I did when I got my, my car at 16, my beat-up old Volkswagen Rabbit, it was, <laughs> it was drive to the comic book store. You know, it was, like, one of the first things, like, get the guys and jump in the car, and we're going to go to the comic book store. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, was, I was a fan of Marvel Comics, you know, uh, you know early on. Uh, Venom, I, of course, like, you know, is one of those characters where you're always sort of intrigued, you know, by it, but... To, to actually be portraying the character now locally is just a, a, such a weird and surreal experience. So, yeah, I was familiar with him, but, I, you know, I wasn't, uh, I think I, I don't know if I had, like, all six of the Lethal Protectors, for example. Like, I, I think I maybe had a couple of those, but, um, but yeah, was, uh, I definitely was familiar with him. And then when they asked me to play the character, it was just like, what, this is actually happening, you know, so pretty cool that's that's amazing yeah i can't imagine the uh how ecstatic you were and i definitely will talk about that in a, a future episode too about you you getting into the role and stuff but that's cool that you you knew who he was like i, I had a friend you talk about you know, your beat up car like my first car when i was 16 i bought it myself uh, actually it was a mazda rx7 1982 and i took it to the arcade every day after school with a friend of mine and that introduced him to venom because we used to play marvel versus capcom 
and uh, oh, nice. and that yeah. was yeah. that yeah. yeah and that was his introduction to Venom. So um, that's pretty cool. So I, I know you said you know you didn't have all the issues of Lethal Protector, and and you maybe didn't stay up with the character and stuff. But over the years now, you know now that you've probably gone back and and viewed some of that stuff or, or looked at other movies or other interpretations before you got the role or, or after you got the role, what, is there a an interpretation of Venom that you've seen, whether it's an artist or an actor playing him, that you've loved or that stood out to you? Any favorite Venom moments? Oh, man, that's tough. There's so many. Yeah. I mean, there's been so many iterations of this character, you know, and uh, I mean, when I, you know, when I went off to college uh, in the late 90s, I kind of, you know, I, I stopped collecting as much, so I didn't keep up. So, you know, like I said, I'm very much like a, a kid of the 90s, so I feel like a kind of old school in that way as far as you know those those first amazing spider-man uh, uh, uh appearances of him like you know with um not with mcfarland but like with uh mark bagley i guess is a, oh yeah artist for right yeah. yeah yeah um to me that really that always resonated and you know like the birth of carnage you know at that time um the, all of those storylines to me all, like really stood, stood out and so um, I think they still resonate with me. You know, when I got the role, I obviously went back and I sort of looked at like the 2000s uh, comics, uh, you know, and like the stuff that like Donny Cates is doing right now and Ryan Stegman, you know, those guys. Uh, and it's so, it's so different, but it's so cool. And it's an, a unique interpretation, but I don't know, man. I, for me, I'm, I guess I'm just an old man now. <laughs> it's like, you know, I, I love that, that old school stuff. I mean, not like Secret Wars old school, but, you know, the, the 90s sort of lethal protector stuff, um, you know, really always resonated with me, which is probably why they made it into a feature. I think that there's uh, a, a huge fan base. You probably know better than I do, but uh, it's a huge part of the reason why they decided to base the movie on the lethal protector story, you know. Oh yeah, I mean that. Yeah, it was when we were talking about that before the movie came out. We were like, uh, a lot of people in the chat were in agreement that uh, that was probably the smartest move was to to start there because in the comics that was a defining moment for Venom. He he was no longer a villain because before you know when he started out, you talked about Todd McFarlane earlier. He was he was kind of a you know a villain and he like terrorized Aunt May and Mary Jane and he didn't do very anti heroic things you know he he did very villainous things so uh, Lethal Protector was his step into heroism and I think uh, I think that's why people are so fond of that because they're like finally my guy is growing he's not he's not a jerk villain anymore he actually there's a heart in there yeah. somewhere yeah yeah. I mean, I'm not going to be that douche that's like, hey, well, of course, it's from, you know, <laughs> Marvel Spider-Man on Disney XD airing right now. And, you know, <laughs> um, I mean, I, <laughs> I love, uh, I love what, uh, what Kevin Burke and Doc Wyatt, our writer uh, and uh, producers have done uh, with this interpretation that I'm fortunate enough to play. I mean, it's, it's cool, you know, it's, and you know, my job is to sort of like take whatever is on the page and just bring, bring it to life as much as I can. And, you know this. You know this version of Venom uh, in the cartoon uh, is, is obviously very different than some of the stuff that like Donny Cates is doing. Um, you know, and some other iterations of it. You know, again, it's for a different demographic. You know, sure. uh, you know this uh, being on Disney XD. Um, you know, and it's uh, it's a privilege, but it's also like those moments that I have, and I think it's what is it, Dead Man's Party? I think is the, the first episode where where. Uh, 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 that I'm bonds with Eddie Brock and I, you know, go to find Mary Jane and I have that moment, um, uh, you know, where, uh, not Mary Jane, sorry, Gwen Stacy, where I <laughs> show up in her house and I have that, you know, that close up creepy moment of, sure do. you know, <laughs> just freaking her, you know, that's, <laughs> Uh, that's juicy stuff, man. That's fun to play. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And yeah, you, you guys are, I mean, uh, to talk about that for a minute and don't feel, don't feel bad for plugging that. I really liked, uh, the two episodes and then the superior episode too, which was, you know, the symbiote with, uh, with Doc Ock and stuff, but the, uh, the dead man's party and Venom returns two parter. That was really great. It established Eddie Brock. He's, you know, photographer working for the daily bugle. He's competitive against Peter Parker and he, he, you know, gets his life ruined right there in the room with J. Jonah Jameson. And uh, and that is very familiar territory. I, the thing we talk about with Eddie Brock all the time is that uh, that he is he's not always a good person. Like he, he means well, but he the way he goes about things are, are always broken. And and then bad luck hits him just as hard as it hits Peter Parker. So 
yeah, I know it's different than maybe what's in the books now, but I felt like it was a lot of familiar stuff for us old school fans. And, and so I personally, I loved it, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of, uh, like my favorite moments, uh, you know, from, from the episodes that I've had, I've, I've had the, the chance to play so far. And like, you know, when he leaves Eddie Brock and goes off and, uh, you know, is just the symbiote himself. I mean, that's just such a, it's such a different sort of way of, uh, uh, you know, his intention has changed. Uh, he's evolved. Uh, you know, he's, he's trying to, uh, he's so, you know, hell bent on vengeance. Uh, and before it was just about, you know, bonding to the perfect host, you know? Right. Uh, so it's the intention slightly changes there, which is kind of fun to play. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. That's the one thing we try to talk about a lot too, is motivation. Like it's like, I, I tell people, cause you know, as a writer myself too, it's like, People go, oh, why do you like that version of the character? And I go, oh, because they explain the motivation of why he did it, and I like when they do that, and that's what explains why he changed or why the the tone has changed. And and so yeah, you talking about that now is is fantastic. And you kind of almost are answering uh, one of my last questions, which is, uh, you know, are you are you a, a fan more of the Venom as a villain or an antihero? But you kind of were just saying how fun it was to play that dark side, but then you also kind of liked the evolution of it as well, right? Oh yeah, I mean, well, yeah. I mean, from, from just from like, you know, as far as vocal performance is concerned, and as far as like, you know, really finding the intent of you know, each moment in the script and all that. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's important to to know, you know, where it's going, you know, why he's so hell bent on this vengeance. But I mean, it's, uh, it's going back like as a fan of the comics. I mean. That turn, you know, with the Leap of Protector story when he becomes the anti-hero, I mean, it's like, you know, that's pretty cool stuff, too. But it is, it, it's, fun, it's fun as an actor to, you know, to be able to play that, that darker stuff, too, you know. Well, sure. So. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure. Yeah, like, I think... Uh, um, Hector Elizondo uh, said he loves playing villains the most, and he said the main reason for him is because uh, villains don't see themselves as the villains, so you get to really go places with the character that that a hero couldn't go yeah and you know the the, the coolest thing uh that you know kevin and doc uh the writer producers uh you know we discussed with the beginning of this maximum venom season three stuff was that there, it wasn't just a singular purpose with with venom um you know it was almost like you know we start to discover uh, that it, it wasn't just about vengeance and bonding with the perfect host. Like there's, there's something that, you know, is uh, on a much grander scale, uh, that I think people should be worried about, you know, it's kind of cool. So, yeah. And, and we'll definitely get the, into that more in, in, in the next, uh, two installments when I talk to you again. So the last thing I just want to mention, cause I, I do want to plug this was, uh, was the, these great toys that are out there. I was following, you know, I follow you on Instagram and I saw you make a video on your, your stories when you went to New York toy fair and you actually got to um, show off the new maximum venom uh, figures that were exclusive to Walmart. And you were like, Hey, you can go buy these right now online. And it was so funny because the day before that I got my income tax money in and so I, I was like, okay. And as soon as I watched, yeah, as soon as I watched your video, I went right to walmart.com and ordered them all. And they got shipped to me before I moved from LA to Florida, uh, just in time too. Right. So, um, so I, you know, I don't know if you have collected other toys or anything like that, that have venom in it, or if you have anything in your, your room for inspiration, like a statue, but do you have a favorite venom toy? Cause we talk about the toys a lot on here, or did you have a favorite one that you saw there at New York toy fair? You know, that, that new line is super cool. Uh, you know, th they have so many different uh, versions in this Maximum Venom line that I, I, think, are, I think people are going to love. You know, I also do the Lego Spider-Man. Uh, you know, I did Vex by Venom for that. That's and, right. Um, I, when I put that together, I, for some reason, it was just like, this is so rad. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I, love, I love that. Um, you know, when it, I, I waited until the first episode that I was actually in aired before I started buying a bunch of Venom swag for my home studio. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that I was actually still in the show <laughs> before I started spending hundreds of dollars. But, uh, yeah, you know, like I've got a couple blasts uh, here that are in the studio that are, you know, sort of like precious to me because it, you know, represents, uh, you know, this big shift and change in my life and my career. So it's, um, but as far as toys are concerned, I mean, there's, 
there's a bunch. I, I really like the ooze, the, the ooze stuff that they did with the Maximum Venom. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so there's a bunch of different uh, ones of those. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, they're all great. <laughs> so. Sweet. And uh, and I guess last question, because uh, – uh, and if you and if you don't mind me asking this, if if so, I can admit it out. But if I was wondering, is your is your son a, a big fan that you're Venom? Oh man, he goes around and he says, "I'm Spider Man, you're Venom. Let's go right now." <laughs> and it's like outside. My my son is two and a half, uh-huh. and uh, this this whole quarantine thing has been really interesting because all I've been doing is is playing the role of Venom uh, during quarantine with my two year old son, which has been pretty fun. So yeah, he's. He definitely knows. He loves that Lego Spider-Man uh, uh, episode. Um, he, he 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 keeps repeating, you know, destroy the city, destroy the city, <laughs> um, which is pretty funny. So <laughs> that's, that's amazing. Yeah, he, he he loved it, and he he'll tell complete strangers, you know, that are like walking by, like my daddy Venom, you know, which is funny. <laughs> That's awesome to hear, man. Yeah, because one of the things I talk about, I worked in a comic store and I worked at Lego, actually, before I moved here, um, and I hand-sold so many of those Vex for Venom, uh, Venom mechs. Uh, <laughs> like, I, 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 everyone that I came know. in, they're, they're like, I'm looking for something for my son. I'm like, does he like Venom? You should buy this. Like, I, I love that set so much. So, um, and I love that movie. We, we reviewed it on the channel, and I, I, I love that, that Vex for Venom movie. It was really awesome. So, that's good to hear, though, And because uh, one thing I tell people all the time is I go, Venom is like kids love venom and people tell me like no no they don't i go trust me i worked at lego and at a comic store kids like venom they think he's cool looking and so that's why i wanted oh, they, it yeah 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 I, I think that's what's so cool it resonates you know this venom resonates with uh, such a wide array of people it's not just kids i mean it you know uh obviously i mean like you, you know there's there's just such a huge fan base for this character which is why it was you know uh, such an honor to be selected to you know portray this 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 guy he's, a, he's an icon you know so yeah um uh in the marvel universe so yeah it's it's, it's really cool that's awesome and we'll definitely talk more about his you know his level of icon and and uh and you know your work and past and present and then we'll dive more into maximum venom in the next couple episodes so uh, ben i'm gonna bid you adieu today but i want to thank you for coming here today and, and everyone who's listening i have two more episodes coming up with ben so if you love what you hear here you know make sure you go follow him on social media and then definitely come back stay subscribed so you don't miss the next two episodes where we talk about his career how he got into playing venom what he brings to the role and then also diving into maximum venom stuff Stuff, leading up to the next episode of Maximum Venom, which airs on May 17, 2020 at 9 p.m. on Disney XD. Make sure you don't miss out. Ben, thanks again for being here, sir. Hey, thank you. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man.